in tune because next up is David Charles Allen, Village Properties Realtor and host of The Hop. That's Home Ownership Podcast here to tell us all about real estate, especially in Santa Barbara. Welcome to The Hop. This is David Charles Allen, Realtor at Village Properties in Santa Barbara, California. My great friend and co-host, Patty Teal. I'm doing wonderful today, Patty. How are you doing? I'm doing great too, David. Good to hear. The weather's beautiful here in Santa Barbara. We're looking ahead to sunny skies scattered throughout the 60s. So it's looking really, really nice. Oh, that's great weather. So it just feels just a tad warm in the sun, but cool when you walk around or go anywhere. That's beautiful weather. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And then not really any surf to be had, but if you have like a stand-up paddleboard, maybe it's fun to go out there and just be on the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds wonderful. Then in terms of interest rates, we are at 6% for 30-year jumbo and 6.25 for 30-year conforming. So really not much movement since last week. No, you know, and even though they've gone up a lot, historically, interest rates are not exactly as high as they could be. Isn't that right? Yeah. So, I mean, you there used to be rates in the 15, 17, 20% range. So right. historically speaking, 6% is really good still. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at rates that we had that were so low for so long, it's you have to, it's a mental hurdle to get back exactly. over there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. how are the real estate stats doing this week? So we have 42 new listings, 13 price changes, 24 that closed, 23 that went pending, three canceled, and six coming soon. So that's a huge buildup of the supply. That's almost 19 new listings and compared to pending. So in getting back up in the 40 new listings, that's great as well. So we're going to see how the demand holds up if we're going to get all those 40 new listings are going to start going pending maybe next week or we're only getting half that are pending. That's kind of showing that maybe the demand's slowing a little bit down in terms of a wide range, but mm -hmm. still, those desirable homes still seem to be selling pretty quickly. Well, that's really exciting, David, because I know for a long time you were hoping things would get up in the 40s and now they're there. Yeah. I mean, we're hoping to get them up in the 60s. That's probably ideal. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we're used to for this kind of year, but we'll take 40s since we've been at 20s for so long. Right. Well, that's great. Any questions of the day for me? I have a few, David. Well, one, people who are listening to the radio may know that I host a scam squad with the district attorney's office. And I guess there have been a lot of scams in California where fraudsters are pretending to be property owners, tricking real estate agents into selling properties that they don't own. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's especially affecting the elderly and foreign real estate property owners. And I know they really spoke that this has happened seven times recently in San Luis Obispo. So it wasn't right in Santa Barbara, but that's pretty darn close. I haven't heard of anything like that. So I don't know how that would even happen, to tell you the truth. I don't either. They didn't really give all the details, but it was really mysterious. I guess the burden is on the real estate and title companies, which is another reason that it's so important to work with somebody reputable like yourself who, uh, you know, wouldn't allow this to happen. They would have to have, you know, the evidence that they are actually the owners of the house. So um, at this point, I just thought maybe you could give your uh, contact information. Yeah, my 805-617-9311 is my phone number and David at David Charles Allen is my email. And it yeah. probably seems like they forged the deed or something like that. Or oh. maybe they were looking working with maybe a shady escrow company. I don't think mm -hmm. it would be an actual escrow company, but maybe one that was that pretending would... to be right. Yeah. So it looks like you're working with an escrow company. It looks like you have real deed. Mm -hmm. um, so just essentially the whole stages of it would be forged. So, right. uh, so it looked real in terms of escrow going through and all the paperwork and all that stuff. But in essence, there's no real company and right, no right. real seller. So I know they're yes. doing that with rental properties for a while where they post a home that was for sale or lived in for rent on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And then they'd say, we're not allowed to do showings right now because blah, 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 blah. But if you want to secure it, you got to send us your deposit. 
And oh, yes. I've even had that happen to me before when looking for a rental. You know, somebody, you know, makes up some excuse. They have to be out of the country for their family, blah, blah, blah. But if you send the money, but it was such a red flag to me that I didn't fall for it. But that and then the last one I want to mention that is just so awful is when people think that they're sending earnest money or escrow money, closing cost money to their escrow company. But it's really someone else who has intercepted the email and it didn't really come from your banker. It came from some crook and people have lost large sums of money with that scam. Yeah, that's another one. That's why wire transfer Mm -hmm. fraud is huge. I mean, you really have to be diligent in recognizing where your emails are coming from. Always recommend When you receive an email from an escrow company asking for money, you call them and make sure that that's the one that was sent. But yeah, the scammers do a really good job at faking emails and just having like a dot somewhere or maybe it's going to be your escrow company's emails.com, but they're fake emails.co. So oh, it's like yes. They, they so you really have to be on eye alert. Yeah. yeah. Or they misspell it slightly. So it's mm-hmm. it looks the same if you're not paying attention. And it's definitely a heartache to have that happen to you. Right. But you're right. The best thing to do is pick up the phone and just make sure that that came from who you think it came from. That's the safest way. Yeah. Never send anyone gift cards either. That, right. <laughs> we, get those, we get those emails all the time where it's mm-hmm. uh, other agents at our office are saying, hey, send me gift cards or just click this link to pay for gift cards for me for something, something, something. It's like, what? Why would anyone be asking for that? I know. If someone got hacked and they just send out mass emails and, you know, Mm -hmm. it must work for somebody because- It must work. It must be a numbers game. I would think the message would be out there, you know, do not pay a company with gift cards, but it still does keep happening. Unfortunately, it's just uh, the way of life anymore. We have to be so very cautious. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So David, I was- going to ask you about another area. We haven't done that for a few weeks. I know that we've talked about many areas in Santa Barbara, but two that we haven't talked about, and they're kind of right next to each other, are that the Mission Canyon area and the Santa Barbara Riviera. So I thought maybe you could discuss that in case there are people looking for houses and would be interested in either of those areas. So those are two similar but completely different kind of um, places to live. Mission Canyon's a little bit further back in terms of accessibility to um, the town. I mean, it's not bad from like downtown and whatnot, but it's a little, it's probably the furthest you can get from the beach and things like that. The one thing about Mission Canyon too, is when we are in high fire season, that's, it's not for the most faint of heart. I know a lot of people that were living there, just were tired of it kind of having to evacuate and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's a beautiful place. It's very serene. It's very quiet. You get some amazing views over there. But for a certain period of time when we had a bunch of fires, the insurance over there was absolutely crazy. And sometimes oh. they weren't even insuring houses. Oh. So it kind of goes into where you are and your comfortability level of with those other aspects. But given that you get a lot more value for your money in terms of Mission Canyon, in terms of the Riviera. So Riviera doesn't necessarily have those concerns, so to say. I think there's Mm. been one time maybe it came up the back of the Riviera, but not really the front. With Riviera, you get the really amazing views most of the time, and you're a little bit closer to town, and that reflects in the price. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit pricier in the Riviera? The Riviera is definitely going to be a little bit pricier than Mission Canyon, And it goes back to what your lifestyle is. So a lot of people that live in Mission Canyon or the Riviera, maybe more of a homebody type where they Mm -hmm. like to be at home and spend their time at home and cook dinner at home and stuff like that. And then people that are on the Mesa maybe are more prone to want to go to the beach every day. So you're a minute or two away from the beach. In terms of Mission Canyon, you got to pack the car. It's probably going to be 10, 15 minutes to get somewhere. While that might not seem like a lot, it definitely is reflective in some some people's uh, way of life, so to say. 
Yeah. Oh, those were some great points about both those areas. So thank you so much. And then I thought we could, of course, <clears throat> give people a catch up on our fur babies. Yeah, everyone's doing amazing. Uh, they're loving the sun, loving the beach. It's perfect beach weather now coming up. So everyone's having a great time. Yeah. And I don't know why, David, but I was reading about dog's eyesight, which just kind of fascinates me. I'm just in everything dog I'm interested in. And they used to think dogs only saw a couple of colors, but I guess they do see gray, brown, yellow, and blue. But their vision compared to ours is a little blurry, but I guess they see very, very well in the dark and low light. And of course, that makes perfect sense when you think about when they were the hunters and where they came from. Yeah, you know, I've always wondered how they figured that out. Yeah, uh, I wondered that too. How did they do these test the dogs? They don't, dogs can't exactly tell them, but I suppose they put some sort of a decoy or something that they have to see if the dog is able to see in low and dark light. But as far as the colors, how do they know what the dog is seeing? Yeah, it's always like, what do birds see? And like, what do Uh you see? It's like, it's so, it's so amazing to think uh, how they can process that. I guess it's like dissecting the eyeball and like what comparing it to ours and like what they have like ours and what they don't have like ours. They say the dogs have two cones rather than the multiple cones that people have. But anyway, you're right. It's very fascinating. Even if they are able to see that, how do they know which colors they see? So I'm I'm wondering maybe if they're wrong. I don't know, but that's what they say. <laughs> you know, it's you know, only you only know if you end up being a dog in one life. You know? Yes, yes. So report back to me, David, if you end up being a dog and can yes. <laughs> Exactly. All right. Well, all your fur babies are great. Everyone's doing amazing. Okay. Mine too. All right. Well, thank you so much, David. And one more time, would you give your information in case people are interested in buying or selling a um, home in the Santa Barbara area? Yeah. My number is 805-617-9311. And my email is david at davidcharlesallen.com. Have a great week, David. You too, Patty. Let's give it your next week. Bye.